Welcome to the Massifies Fast Five MedTech News Podcast, the show that keeps you up to date on the latest breakthroughs in medical technology with the top five news stories to get your day started. Today is June 2nd. I'm your host, Danielle Kirsch, and today I'm joined by our guest co-host for the week, Executive Editor Chris Newarker. Today we'll talk about Bayer's Digital Health Plan, a new FDA clearance boosting Philips and Massimo's partnership, and some news from a startup called Ezra that is trying to shorten MRI times to 15 minutes using AI. Just a quick note before we get started, if you've been joining us through the Device Talks podcast network, this will be the last episode you hear through the Device Talks feed. If you'd like to join myself and my regular co-host, Sean Hooley, subscribe to the Mass Device Fast Five wherever you listen to podcasts. You can also head over to massdevice.com slash podcast to get links to the show on all podcast platforms and insights into today's episode and previous episodes. How are you doing today, Chris? Hey, doing well. Another warm day here in Minneapolis, which is great. We have a lot of news to cover today. It's been a been a busy day for us over on Mass Vice. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of a digital health day too. Definitely. So what's the first thing that we should know for today? Well, the first thing today is uh, the startup Ezra has won an FDA clearance for uh, artificial intelligence that enhances MRIs. And this is some cool tech. I mean, um, and they're talking about this uh, technology uh, cutting the uh, length of an M- MRI in, in half from an hour to 30 minutes. And you know, as you were just saying, I mean, their eventual goal is to get this down to 15 minutes. Yeah. And especially right now when AI is just this big trend going on, you know, you hear about ChatGPT and Microsoft making their own chat GPT and all this other stuff. So what does the Ezra Flash do? You know, the, the Ezra Flash, um, you know, it leverages AI across uh, all three components of, uh, of cancer, you know, screening, uh, the imaging, the analysis, the reporting. And what the uh, Ezra Flash AI does specifically is that it, it enables Ezra to increase the uh, MR image quality. And they, you know, they train this uh, MRI, you know, by uh, creating a fast MRI protocol that produced these noisy images in the system you know, was trained itself over time to enhance the quality of the images. Um, and they also trained the AI using uh, like a longitudinal MRI data set that had like hundreds of thousands of MR images and in, in patients and healthy subjects. So, I mean, you know, it, it basically just a ton of data fed into into this uh, AI system that then learned to like to basically uh, be able to learn how to speed up the, uh, you know, the, uh, the imaging process and, you know, create a complete and accurate MRI scan images off of like, you know, much shorter scan times. This clearance, as I mentioned before, kind of reflects the growing adoption of AI driven technologies in healthcare, particularly in medical imaging and the integration of AI algorithms into MRI analysis could potentially revolutionize the way radiologists interpret images and save time and provide valuable insights into more accurate diagnosis. What do doctors think about this technology in particular? Ezra in its news release, they had a uh, chief of innovation director of the, the Center for Advanced Imaging Innovation Research at uh, NYU, uh, like calling this like an important landmark, the beginning of a, of a sea change in how medical imaging is, is used. Up until this point, just because of the length of, of time with MRI scans, it's, it's, usually, it's principally been used to diagnose and characterize disease once, you know, health providers are already spied, spotted signs and symptoms in people. But with Ezra shortening time for these scans, you know, it could be used as a tool for early detection of cancer prior to the development of, of symptoms. This could help turn, you know, at, le- at least what this Dr. Uh, Daniel Sodickson was saying was like, this could turn MRI into more of like a, an early detection tool that could uh, you know, spot cancer early. Interesting. I know Ezra was founded in 2019, so this achievement could position them as a promising player in the medical imaging space. So speaking of efficiency, what's the next thing we should know for the day? Well, B. Brown announced it's launched this next generation of its uh, infusion management software called uh, Dose Track Enterprise. So what does that new software do? It allows organizations to receive like a mix of real-time views and retrospective reporting features. And, you know, the whole the whole idea of this is to enable them to better understand their infusion pump fleet and associated data. So, yeah, this just plays right into, uh, you know, the proving, you know, efficiency efficiencies that, you know, health providers as well. So what does this mean for the mobility of those infusion pumps across the healthcare system? Okay, so they could connect up to 40,000 pumps 
at an unlimited number of facilities with just one application. So, I mean, this can allow, you know, health providers to manage their infusion pumps from a single central application, regardless of you know how large their fleet is or the number of locations they have. And so this could this could make it much easier to kind of like move these infusion pumps between different parts of a health provider's network and you know, and then you know getting um, data you know aggregated and disaggregated, you know, you know, to really help them figure out how to improve quality. It sounds like the adoption of this infusion management software kind of aligns with the industry's shift toward digitalization and an increased emphasis on patient safety and quality outcomes. What has previous data of the dose track shown? Well, B. Brown said that uh, data analysis achieved with dose track has helped, you know, hospitals, uh, you know, reach significant results. I mean, some of the statistics they mentioned was 100% drug library compliance, 100% auto programming compliance, 99% fewer alerts. It's worth noting, too. I mean, th- I mean, these are, you know, infusion pumps. I mean, these are infusion systems. You know, they're, uh, you know, delivering drugs to people, you know, at health providers, you know, and, and you know, when, when something goes wrong with these, you know, they can really go wrong. So, I mean, that. that that's really good news, you know, to hear 99% fewer alerts. Yeah, good point. What else should we know for the day? Well, and by the way, this is like, this is the other story that, that uh, you wrote, Danielle. I mean, my gosh, we're just, uh, we're just cranking them out this week, you know, with, uh, with Sean out. ABK Biomedical, um, they received uh, FDA IDA for their uh, tumor treating uh, microspheres. And uh, this, uh, you know, ABK Biomedical, they're based in Nova Scotia. And this uh, IDA approval allows them to commence a multi center pivotal clinical study in the US. And this is involving patients with an especially tough to treat form of liver cancer. We've definitely seen a few investigational device exemption approvals this week. So this is interesting news. What will the study evaluate? Well, the, uh, you know, the Route 90 study, they're going to evaluate the safety and efficacy of their I-90 microspheres. And this is going to involve patients with uh, unresectable hepatocellular uh, carcinoma. I think I pronounced that right. But I mean, this is basically like certain types of liver tumors that, you know, they can't be resected. You can't have surgeries to take them out. You know, and, you know, li- liver cancer is, uh, I, mean, I mean, I just was looking at a Johns Hopkins website, you know, saying that it's you know, responsible for over 12,000 deaths. Uh, in the United States per year. I mean, it's one of the most serious cancers that, uh, you know, adults can get. So it's going to be, you know, uh, evaluating the the HCC tumors response rates and duration of response from the I-90 microspheres, you know, you know, you know, using a treatment as a co-primary endpoints. So I hadn't really heard of ABK Biomedical before this came across our desks, but it sounds like they're advancing interventional oncology and addressing an unmet clinical or medical need. What are the primary endpoints of this study? It's going to evaluate the the safety, um, you know, the potential benefit of intraprocedural visualization, and you know, and the ability to provide a, a post treatment CT dosimetry with uh, imageable microspheres. And we mentioned earlier this week that IDs are a big deal, but what are doctors and executives saying about what's to come? What's in the future for ABK Biomedical? Well, you know, they they had a quote here, uh, you know, from um, you know Andrew Kennedy, who's uh, you know a physician and chief of radiation oncology at Sarah Cannon Cancer Institute and principal investigator of this Route 90 study. He say, said that, you know, he thinks the I-90 microspheres could be a significant and, you know, uh, a meaningful technology advancement to Y-90 radioembolization therapy. is something not seen over in over two decades since uh, the current therapies became, you know, clinical available. So, you know, he thinks this could, this could really boost, you know, this technology. Awesome. Now, it looks like we have some news from Philips and Massimo. Yeah, they got they got a uh, FDA clearance that you know allows uh, the incorporation of Massimo's advanced monitoring tech into Philips existing high acuity patient monitors. So this is you know a clearance that's going to boost partnership between uh, Massimo and Philips even more. What does the FDA clearance cover? So it allows the companies to use uh, sedline brain function monitoring, regional oximetry, and CO2 measurements in uh, Philips patient monitors, uh, specifically the IntelliView MX750 and the MX850. And, you know, this is like the latest extension of Massimo and Philips ongoing, you know, collaboration. The idea is to enable clinicians to make quick and informed decisions about the need for additional monitoring equipment. How does the combination of the two technologies or the two companies' technologies benefit clinicians? 
you know, you by integrating the the sed line, you know, the O3 and CO2 advanced mass MO measurements into the Philips, you know, monitor series. I mean, the clinicians can access and monitor blood saturation in the brain, anesthetic sedation, and patient respiratory performance. All and they can do all this from the same monitor. So, I mean, again, I mean, it's it's kind of uh, it's it kind of interesting this theme that we're seeing in you know the news that we're reporting today. But this this just looks like another example of something that's like really boosting you know efficiency. You could could boost efficiency at health providers. Yeah, this collaboration really leverages both of the companies' respective strengths in medical technology to deliver this kind of comprehensive and integrated solution for clinicians and patients alike. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, it's like each of these companies has something they're really good at and they're bringing this together to really, you know, make monitoring at the hospital, you know, much more efficient or health providers in general for that matter. So what are executives saying? Well, the quote we have here from John Coleman, who's the president of worldwide OEM sales and global health of Massimo is uh, is that combining our expertise in non-invasive monitoring and signal processing technologies with Philips expertise in integrating patient monitoring and therapy solutions is a win-win for patients and clinicians alike. All right. And now let's move on to some of the bigger news that we had today. You grabbed this early in the day. Yeah. I mean, this, uh, our top headline today is that, you know, Bayer is making a big digital health play. Uh, they, you know, they announced that they've launched a business unit that will focus on precision digital health products across like a range of everyday health categories. And this seems like a big deal because, I mean, you just have to think of Bayer's size. I mean, this is German pharma and biotech. Giant had sales that are equivalent to you know, roughly fifty-three billion dollars in their most recent fiscal years, and in comparison, Medtronic, which is the world's largest medical device company, it had you know about thirty-one billion dollars in revenue. So this is a much bigger company. So it sounds like this strategic focus on digital health kind of represents a significant shift in their approach to healthcare. What did Bayer say it will prioritize in this announcement? I reached out to a company spokesperson about you know how much this investment was. They, they weren't able to disclose that at this time, but you know, the, the spokesperson did add that you know this is an investment in pipeline project development, IT infrastructure, strategic partnerships, and personnel. And the whole idea of this is to rapidly scale up new innovations across all the company's uh, categories. So what's Bayer currently investing in? Oh, uh, they've, they've you know been doing some work in precision health already. I mean, they, uh, you know, uh, piloted projects with uh, Ada Health, embed uh, its AI-based system assessment of several of its brands. You know, there's been a, uh, took some of the first steps earlier this year, uh, you know, for, you know, a uh, heart health, you know, initiative in the United States with a heart ri- risk assessment, uh, you know, powered by uh, UMA, um, you know, and they say they got several other projects in, in their pipeline already with anticipated launches beginning later this year. Um, but I, I I thought this this story was especially interesting because just a few weeks ago, Tom, you know, our, our colleague Tom Salemi and, and I were or like doing a uh, a live device talks weekly at the end of our you know device talks Boston show and one of the panelists was a uh, Joe you know Mullings who's CEO of you know the Mullings group you know this uh, this you know real highly respected uh, you know uh, search firm in the device industry um, and and other life sciences companies and you know he made this prediction at at the show that he thought that you know we we're going to see more uh, you know pharmaceutical companies you know kind of getting into this uh, you know remote patient monitoring you know monitoring chronic conditions space and he thought he thought they were going to take an enormous pie of this away from you know from the from device companies just simply because of their size they just have you know a lot more phds you know they've deeper pockets you know um you know and it feeds into what you know their pharma model does does well and then you know here just a, just a few weeks later we've got you know Bayer saying that they're going to be uh, like uh, having like a dedicated uh unit at their company this uh, you know Bayer Precision Health that's going to be you know identifying digital and digital support consumer healthcare opportunities can you tell us a little more about what Bayer Precision Health will be about Al Bayer said they're embedding it within the business. It's going to include leaders with diverse responsibilities and expertise, and it's going to, you know, focus on addressing unmet needs and in, in core categories. You know, it's going to be about like developing new evidence-based precision health products, you know, to, to market and scaling the tech globally. And, you know, Bayer Precision Health is going to be working with startups and, you know, other digital health providers, you know, on top of upskilling, you know, what you know, the, the digital health capabilities Bayer already has. Interesting. Well, that's all we have for today. I just wanted to stress again that if you've been listening through the Device Talks podcast network, that this will be 
your last time hearing the Mass Device Fast Five through the Device Talks feed. Just search for Mass Device Fast Five wherever you listen to podcasts to get this daily news podcast into your feeds every Tuesday through Friday. Head over to massdevice.com slash podcast for links to the podcast platforms if that's more convenient for you. And you can also gain insights into this episode and previous episodes at that link. My regular host, Sean Hooley, will be back next week. So I hope all of our new listeners join us for that. But I wanted to thank you, Chris, for joining me this week, filling in for Sean. I know it's been it's been like a boot camp for you getting getting the news out fast fast five. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's uh it's it's been it's been a fun week and you know and uh you know it's uh yeah it's been uh re- really happy to to fill in and uh, it'll it'll be uh neat, neat to seeing you and Sean you know uh you know getting back to the routine uh, next week. Hey, and if you want to, you know, read more and find out more about these stories, head over and, you know, for, for all news med tech, head over to massdevice.com. Please connect with us online. I'm on Twitter at Danielle underscore Kirsch, K-I-R-S-H, and the same name on LinkedIn. Where can our listeners find you, Chris? Hey, you can, you can find me on LinkedIn, Chris Newmarker, like a new marker. Hey, can I do my uh, Device Talks Weekly thing? Like, follow, subscribe. Subscribe to the Mass Device Fast Five wherever you listen to podcasts and share this episode. Join us Tuesday for your daily MedTech News Roundup. Thank you for listening. Thank you.